uh, a project which has just started. Uh, we will be meeting actually next week for the first time. And what you see in this slide is um, a picture of the Arctic of sea ice which is melting. And there, that which I want you to see because of the implications that the Arctic is changing and is where it's changing the fastest. And also that in order to do this type of work, there is the need to have a lot of interdisciplinary, a large team. This is uh, four institutions with a total of 11 people, 10 of them, the them being modelers, and one of me being the empiricist. It is my role to keep them straight, and it is also my role to tell them what to do and what they're doing wrong or right, which is something I do frequently, as people here know. <laughs> Um, but since I was, since I started graduate school, I worked in the laboratory in the field, doing experimental work. One flask, one time, one space. The big question is, and I have highlighted here, is the issue of spatial resolution. How do you go from something that you do in the lab to something that applies to the entire Arctic? And it is my privilege to finally get there in order to get these modelers to high resolution models. In other words, right now, most of these large models are in the hundreds of kilometers. That's the minimum that they can do. These guys promise me that they can do two to 10 kilometers. That's a big deal. That's also very costly from a simulation perspective, from a, a computer runtime. No, I'm looking here at Nick. Uh, and so we will see whether this is possible or not. Some of the things that we will cover are issues of nutrient transport, formation of phytoplankton blooms, issues of prime production. Um, there's lots of uncertainty about all of these things in the Arctic Ocean. 